Welcome to Simplo School. My name is Dave and today we will discuss internal audit charters. We will look specifically into the definition and characteristics of an internal audit charter and also go through questions and answers. To put it simply, an internal audit charter is an overarching document that covers the scope of internal audit activities of an organization. While studying for the CISA exam or looking at different internal audit charters, some may be more specific. For example, CISA talks about the IS internal audit charter. This basically means an internal audit charter that mainly goes over information systems of an organization. What is the objective of an internal audit charter? An internal audit charter clearly defines the responsibility, scope, and authority of an audit function. So please promise me this one thing. When you hear internal audit charter, think of the three main points. Now we will jump into the characteristics of an internal audit charter, covering what it is compared to what it is not. What it is. It is a static document that should only be changed if the change is thoroughly justified. It covers overall high level scope of audit activities. Overall and high level are key words. It defines the role of audit functions in an organization. And lastly, it reports to and obtains approval from the board of directors and audit committee. And on the other hand, what it is not. It is not a dynamic document. As mentioned before, it should not frequently change unless thoroughly justified. It does not cover detailed yearly audit calendars, audit planning, and other routine activities. It does not define budget for audit travel expenses and professional fees. And lastly, it does not document audit procedures. Jumping straight into the questions to prepare you for the CISA exam. Question number one, an internal audit charter would most likely include Think back to the definition of an internal audit charter. D is the correct answer. High level scope of audit function. That is one of the three main characteristics of an internal audit charter. The first two options are incorrect because the internal audit charter will not cover procedural aspects, which include specific tasks related to the audit. And choice C is not correct because an engagement letter is focused on specific audit exercises, not an internal audit charter. All right, let's get on a roll. Question number two, an information systems internal audit charter would most appropriately be approved by? If you selected the audit committee, you are correct. The reason why that is the answer is regardless of what kind of internal audit charter it is, it is approved by an audit committee and board of directors. If those two entities do not exist, then senior management is the most appropriate entity to approve the internal audit charter. Question number three, an internal audit charter should include the If you selected C, you are correct. It should include the responsibility of the audit function. Think back to those three points I told you to remember. An internal audit charter includes the audit function's responsibility, scope, and authority. All right, last question here. Question number four. An internal audit charter should not... If you selected D, you are correct. An internal audit charter should not document audit procedures. Remember, an internal audit charter looks for the overall scope of things. It will not document specific tasks related to the audit. If you like this video and want more content, please click like and hit subscribe. I want to post more videos to help you out, so if you have any suggestions, please leave it down in the comments. Thank you.